All right, so we introduced vector fields in the previous video. Now we're going to talk about how to take derivatives of vector fields. And it turns out there's, there's more than one way to take a derivative of a vector field. Um, so the first thing that we'll do is we'll introduce this so-called um, del operator. Um, so this is a it's sort of a vector value differential operator is probably the right way to think of it. So it looks like this. So it's this upside down triangle. And we think of it like this. I ddx plus j ddy plus k ddz. So we think of it like this, right? So it's, it's kind of like a vector, except the components of the vector are not numbers or functions. The components of this vector are, are differential operators, right? They're, they're partial derivative operators. So these are, you know, this is basically something which is waiting to take the partial derivative of some function, right? So it's waiting to be fed a function that it can differentiate. So how do you use this? Well, the simplest one is to just feed it a function via sort of the equivalent of a scalar multiplication, right? So um, so this is the gradient. So we're going to be given some C1 function f, right? a function of three variables. And we're going to feed it in. And so if you think about, like, how do, you, how do you multiply a vector by a scalar? So if I was going to take a vector and multiply by a scalar, I just apply the scalar to each component, right? They each get multiplied by that component. Um, a, a function like this, a real-valued function, you think of as a scalar, right? It's, its output is a single number, right? Uh, remember that if you're, if you're doing vector geometry or just linear algebra, your, your scalars are the numbers that you use as coefficients for vectors, right? So we write our vectors over the real numbers, so our scalars are real numbers, right? So a function outputs a scalar. Um, now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to do the usual scalar multiplication where you multiply everything on the left. So we're not going to do f times del. Uh, we're not going to do f times ddx, f times ddy, f times ddz. Um, we, we're going to put it on the right so that the derivatives actually apply to the function. So what we get is we get the usual notation for the gradient, this del f. And so we can think of it, if you want to, you can think of it in sort of steps that you have this ddx, j, ddy, k, ddz, right? And you're going to feed that a function. So you just multiply the function through the brackets, right? So it's going to be the x derivative of f, y derivative of f, z derivative of f. We still have the i, j, k. So these are still vectors, right? So it's i, df, dx, j, df, dy, and then k, df, dz. Okay? And if you want to, you could write that in component or sort of the angle bracket notation. You could write it as df dx, df dy, df dz. So that's the usual gradient that, uh, that we learned about back in the, uh, in the first chapter when we were doing differential calculus, right? This gradient vector, which we know we use it to compute normal vectors, we use it to compute directional derivatives, we use it to find directions of maximum increase and decrease, right? It's, it's the same gradient that we all know and love. Um, we're just kind of thinking about it in a different way, right? So essentially, if this acts via scalar multiplication, you get the gradient, right? It acts on a scalar function by scalar multiplication. It's just that here you have to be a little bit careful because when we multiply, once you're working with differential operators, right? Think of a differential operator as like a really big matrix. Um, kind of is. It's, it's, it's sort of like a matrix for an infinite dimensional vector space. But we don't need to, we don't need to go down that road. Uh, 
order matters, right? Order of multiplication matters, right? When you apply the operator to the function with the operator on the left, function on the right, um, then a derivative happens. If you do it the other way around, there is no derivative. You're just using that function as a coefficient in front of the derivative, which is, which is a different thing. Okay, so that's the gradient. Next up is divergence. Okay, and so far for divergence, what we're going to be given is a continuously differentiable vector field. So vector field F, I'll just write it as P, Q, R. Um, and of course, you can do this in R2 if you want. Um, same thing, of course, um, gradient you can do in R2 as well. Um, just drop the last component, right? You can do vector fields in R2. Um, so the divergence, what it looks like is, well, we think about, so you think about multiplication. We, did, we thought of this as sort of a scalar multiplication. Now we want to combine two vectors. And you remember from linear algebra that there are two types of vector multiplication. One of those is the dot product, right? So the divergence looks like this del dot f. Okay. So we can think of this, let's do it this way. Think of this as ddx, ddy, ddz, dot product with p, q, r. And remember when you do a dot product, you combine corresponding components, right? So we combine these two, we combine these two, we combine these two. If it was a regular dot product, if these were all numbers, these would just be multiplications. We do this product, this one, this one. Um, because these are functions and these are derivatives, this derivative acts on this function, this derivative acts on this function, this derivative acts on this function, right? And then the other thing you have to do with the dot product is once you've combined the components, you add them up. So we get dp dx plus dq dy plus dr dz, okay? And that's the divergence. Um, by the way, we're gonna, do, we're gonna do some examples and we're gonna talk about the sort of um, geometric interpretations of these things in, in later videos. Right now we're just gonna, we're gonna introduce the notation, introduce the formulas, and we'll go from there when we're ready. All right, so the last one is the curl. Okay, so again, somebody gives you a vector field. We want it to be at least continuously differentiable so that we can take the first order partial derivatives. So we're starting with P, Q, R again. And the other type of product that you can do with two vectors is there's the vector valued product, right? There's the cross product. Uh, so the cross product combines two vectors in R3 and produces another vector. So what does that look like? So what we are gonna get is something that looks like this. Let's do, well, let's keep alternating colors. Let's do yellow. Um, okay. So we'll write this as, so one of the ways you can do this um, is remember there's this kind of trick for remembering the cross product where it's kind of like a determinant, except, you know, well, these are, these are vectors and normally a determinant has numbers in it, right? Now we're gonna stray even further from the usual kind of way you think about it, a, a determinant because the second row, the second row is gonna consist of differential operators, right? So we're, we're really straying now. And then the final row, you put the components of your function, all right? And so now you just expand, okay? So what we're gonna get is we're gonna get i, right? So think about expanding along the first row. We do the first entry times this two by two um, cofactor, right? But we do this way and then that way, right? And it's always going to be the derivative acting on the function. So we're going to have dr 
dy, and then we're going to have dq dz. Um, for the middle one, remember you get that minus sign, minus j, and then we do the outside. So we do dx dr, or sorry, dr dx, haha, <laughs> dr dx minus dp dz, and then plus k times. So then we're doing this 2 by 2 here, right? So dq dx minus dp dr. Okay, and that's the curl, right? So it gives you, it gives you a vector, right? So, so it gives you a vector field, right? So a curl takes the derivative of you know, some input vector field and it produces an output vector field, right? So divergence takes a vector field as an input, produces a function as an output. Curl takes a vector field as an input, produces a new vector field as an output. Whereas gradient, function goes in, vector field comes out, right? So we kind of, you know, the three of them, they all, they all go one way or the other, right? Um, either function to vector field, or vector field to function, or vector field to vector field. Um, we don't do function to function. Um, well, there are other ways to kind of take a function and produce a new function by doing derivatives, right? Um, like, you know, partial derivatives, for example. Um, We'll probably encounter some other examples where function we have function in and function out, but um, those will probably be on an, a later video. Uh, one last thing to mention before we uh, before we finish this one off: uh, if we were in R two, right? I'm doing everything here in R three. Um, so what do you do in two dimensions? Well, divergence is fine in two dimensions. You just lose this term, right? That term goes away, and you just have dp dx dq dy. Um, that's fine. Uh, what about curl? Well, one of the ways you can think about curl in the plane is you could think about, you know, so if we had just the vector PQ, you could think of that as maybe a vector PQ and then just zero here. So you think of the, the, the XY plane, you know, R2 is the XY plane sitting inside of R3. You can do that. Where it just so happens that, that P and Q they only depend on x and y. They don't depend on z. Um, so if you go through and you do that, well, then you're going to realize that, well, okay, so r is 0. So th these go away. p and q, they don't depend on z. So these go away. All you're left with is, is this part here, right? So you just get a k component. And, and so sometimes if you're working in r2, um, you, you could think about the curl as kind of pointing up out of the xy plane, hence the, the k part. Um, but you might also think of curl as a scalar if you're working in R2. So you might think of this here as, as the curl if you're working in R2. Um, occasionally you'll see that. It's, it's less common, but it does come up from time to time. All right. Um, so now that we've made all the definitions, we're going to work through some examples. So we're going to do some gradients, divergence, curl. We're going to talk a little bit about what these things mean. And then we'll be ready to move on to line integrals.